happy Sunday Hello. to you from Brother Larry as I welcome you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and also as I lead this fellowship of information, inspiration in the knowledge of our God. So powered by the Pastor Larry Dineco Center for Education. Mm -hmm. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gem sown upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We're sharing truth this morning on what should pay to really, really know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that's coming from Philippians, the third chapter of Philippians 9 through 11. We're praying together this fine Sunday morning. Father God, we bless your name. Yet another Sunday, a day on which we rejoice to meet together, to meet with you. Father, be blessed on account of that in the name of Jesus today. We trust of God is going to be another fantastic day at church in Jesus' name. Before we go, we share together from here. We are asking, Lord, that you will help that in the name of Jesus Christ, it will go so well for the praise of your people. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. 3, 9 to 11. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conform to his death if by any means i may attain to the resurrection from the dead this is loaded i hope uh, we can do this in 10 minutes praise god so he was talking about having talking about gaining christ he went on to say having gained him to be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is true faith in christ naturally the righteousness that come from god you know by faith was talking about not having my own righteousness, trying to distinguish between himself and Judaists and the Pharisees and all that. Everybody um, walked upon his own righteousness, and it was account of that his own righteousness that he can consider himself blameless. Like Paul said earlier on, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, in, in verse 6, blameless. Right. So it came on account of their own effort and all that, so it was their own righteousness. But he didn't cut it when it comes to uh, the presence of God. Because you see, all that your own righteousness is among your own fellow men that you can compare and say that it's somewhat. But it's like comparing candle light to the, to the, to the, to the stadium lights. <laughs> Praise God. That's the way it is. That your righteousness is the candle light. In the face of stadium life, it's a stain. It's a little yellow stain. <laughs> you know, praise God. That's the way it is with God. So it says, not having my own righteousness, that candle light equivalent, hallelujah, but the righteousness which is in Christ. That's what it says. The one that through faith in Christ, righteousness which comes from God by faith, that's the one I want. The one that is imputed. The one that is like an inheritance. Take for example, um, you bear so, so and so and so name. But that name, you are bearing it from your father. And your father has made a big name in the country where you live. Of course, you have inherited that name. It is not because you have worked or anything. Because you bear that name from that fact from your father. Yeah, you are going to just bear the name. And everybody says, oh, it's a hair, it's a hair, it's, you know, something like, something like that. Yeah. So that's the way we got the righteousness. It's a gift that come, comes from God. It's part of our inheritance, if you like. Okay. And we just bear it. Hallelujah. So that's what he was saying. I want to be found in Christ, not having that my own righteousness, the type I had as a Pharisee. Hallelujah. But the one now that I have in Christ imputed unto me an inheritance I obtain because I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. So that's what he was trying to describe there. He went on to say that I may know him and the oh, we are now, and the power of his resurrection. Remember that from the beginning he said that Look, I counted everything but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. When not to talk about gaining Christ, he's now going a little bit further to break it down. That I may know him along with my knowing him. Some other things I will come to know or to experience or to understand or to share in. On account of that, my knowing him. And that is one of them is what he called the power of his resurrection. Praise God. The power of his resurrection. Praise God. So you see, we're going to talk about that power of resurrection. But let us look at this um, 
um, excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We spoke about certain things that could be gained to you. Can you remember we, we remitted a number of things that could be gained to you? Your family background, your name, your degree, your pedigree, your connections, your achievements in life, you know, and all those things, all those things you could count now to be lost for Christ. Yeah, so that you can get to know Christ. Now, getting to know Christ, what are the other things that you may need to do away with so that to allow you to really know this Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. We want to look at one or two things uh, because of what I know you need to pay to get to have this knowledge. Because I, I know some things you need to pay to get this knowledge and therefore know some of the things that you are going to need to drop off. You know, because if you are going to pay this one, then you must drop certain things off. Praise God. That's what I'm talking about. Take for example, some interests of yours that occupy you so much. They may have to go. If you really want to know this Christ, some involvements of yours that occupy your mental space, you are involved in this matter or in this thing and all that, and that thing fills your mental space, you know, and all those things, they may need to go at the end of the day. Hallelujah. Some things that um, you are part and parcel of, but actually they consume so much of your time. Yeah, you know, those things may have to go. If you are going to put in the necessary things to know this Christ the way you ought to know the Christ. At times also, some of the things that um, are concerning, that are heavy upon your heart, that are mm, making you remain awake in the night, or that at times they make you, you are here, but your thoughts are far away. Yeah, all those things. Listen, you are going to have to learn to roll those things onto Christ. Like we we'll read in, in the book of Peter, roll your bodies onto Christ so that you can free up your mental space, free up your spirit man, free up everything so that you can give it the things you need to. What are the things you need to give? Number one is time. Hallelujah. I'm going to give it time. If you want to know this, our Lord, I'm going to give it time. I'm going to clear up your mental space if you really want to know this. You are going to give him full concentration. Hallelujah. Give him full concentration. Those are the things you are going to pay to really know this Christ. I spoke about time. I spoke about mental space. I spoke about uh, full concentration. Praise God. And, um, and then rolling your body. Yeah. Roll that your body upon him so that you can free up your, your mind and your, uh, maybe should I say your emotions. Yeah. And all those things. Free it up completely so that you can have time to really get yourself into getting to know the lord and things like that you pay these things hallelujah and that's why i said first of all those are this you're more going to you are going to jettison and all that and all that and then one big one that we all know about but we don't do it because we allow ourselves to be so very occupied i call it spiritual seclusion times when you must have time apart with him alone we call it quiet time but it's a little bit more than quiet time it's also quiet but not that one you do in the morning or at night before you sleep. Another one where it is just you and God on some, under some tree meditating, on some field, in some park, in some quiet place, you know, spiritual seclusion. You also need that as well. They will lead you. They will help you to get to know Christ. We are really rushing now because I wanted this to be not as long as all the other ones for the week. You know, it's been so long this week, but let's just do it. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Ah, I really don't have time for this power of resurrection. But you know this thing called the power of resurrection. We saw it in the book of um, Ephesians, if you remember. Ephesians 1, 9 to, to 21. We saw it again in Ephesians 2, 6. And then somewhere in chapter 4, it, it's implied. In chapter 4, where it says he descended and then he ascended again. You know, the power of, of his resurrection. In chapter 2, where it talks about you having been raised together and seated together with him. Can you remember? You know, we saw all those things. Now, so did this power, it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. It's a big thing. It's a huge power. I was telling us that one that lived through from the lowest to the highest. Can somebody remember? But if you look at the story of the resurrection, you find out that this power did a number of things for Jesus Christ. And so it's a, it's a, it's a manifold power. It has uh, several expressions of it. Take for example, I said it lifted Jesus from hell back to life. That's from the lowest. So it's the power of elevation. It's the power of victory. Went going into somebody's territory and defeating him there in his own territory is the power of victory. Hallelujah. Is the power of elevation. Is the power of bodily transformation. The only marks that, that were left on, on the body of Jesus were left as receipts. 
deliberately left as receipts. All the other ones had gone. Transformed body altogether. Amen. It's the power of provision. You know, it's for some reason that were clothes for him to wear. So that by the time he went out, he didn't go out naked. The one he pulled out of his body was still there. Hallelujah. But some clothes were provided by him. It's the power of provision. Amen. It's the power of, um, of way making. As he, as he got up, somehow God has sent some angels to open the door to roll away the stone so that he could make it, we could make a way. It's the power of the resurrection. That power that, that puts your enemies to sleep. Hallelujah. We could go on and on and on. I don't have, I've spent more than my time already. Praise God. And then it says, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to into his death, if by any means I may attain to that resurrection from the dead. You know what he was talking about here? The fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to his death identifying with him in his sufferings coming to a place where i so love him i have so surrounded my life in conformity with that thing that jesus did when he surrendered his life so much so that he he went and had the death of the cross the one we were reading earlier on i want to so surrender my life to to him that way if peradventure i also may experience that is resurrection experience. That one is that is resurrection experience. I may also have. Hallelujah. It's a bit complex, but it's a bit deep and big as well. Paul was praying, I want to identify with him in his suffering. I want to so surrender to him the way he so surrendered to God. Came down, identified as a man, went on like a sheep led to slaughter, didn't say a thing, right up to the death of a cross, and then he rose again gloriously. I also want to identify with him to that dimension, peradventure. I also may experience that rising gloriously. Hallelujah. We shall all experience it by and by in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But what Paul was talking about is that, that even while living, I may live that kind of life, that kind of post-resurrection life, hallelujah, in the midst of the brethren. Such a beautiful thing, but beautiful spirit that Paul has, and I trust that the Lord will inspire us to that. In Jesus' holy name, happy Sunday one more time. For adding yourself a fantastic time at church. Make somebody happy today as you hug, as you shake, as you comment, and things like that, by the grace of God. Nice week ahead of you.